السلام عليكم ورحمة الله وبركاته بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم الحمد لله والصلاة والسلام على رسول الله وعلى آله وأصحابه أجمعين we praise Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. We send blessings and salutations upon Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, his household, his companions. We ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to bless them, to bless every one of us, to grant us forgiveness during this beautiful, beautiful season. And we ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala uh, to be pleased with every one of us. I mean, my brothers, my sisters, every one of us has needs. We call out to the Almighty. How do we call out to the Almighty? We need to seek the forgiveness of the Almighty. We need to praise Him. We need to express our dependence dependence on him, his independence from us, the fact that he has what we want. We call out to him very humbly. We use the most beautiful words. We send blessings and salutations upon Muhammad sallallahu at the beginning and at the end. And we make sure that we obey Allah's instruction thereafter. And when he gives us something, we must be thankful to him. Also, we show gratitude to the Almighty. We must show gratitude to the Almighty for what he has already bestowed upon us. We're going through the supplication of the Prophet Ayyub alayhi salam and I made mention of a hadith of the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wasallam in the previous episode where he says that those who are tested are the ones who are closest to us and then the others are tested less and less and less and a person is tested, he bears patience until he moves on the earth without, without a single sin on his back. So this is actually a bonus from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala saying that you will definitely be forgiven as a result of the tests if you are to bear patience. Remember one thing, don't question the decree of Allah. No matter how difficult the hardship is, take it in your stride. Remember that the good days will always follow. And remember that if you are being tested, there are others who are better than you who were tested with that which was bigger than the test you have. May Allah make it easy for every one of us. I now want to move on to the Prophet Yunus alayhi salam. Uh, he was also known as the Noon, the Noon, uh, you know, the one who was swallowed by a fish. The type of fish we don't know. There is a great discussion uh, about what type of fish it was. The reality is it was a fish and uh, he was swallowed by it. Very quickly and very briefly, he was sent by Allah to certain people. He called out, uh, you know, he called them towards Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. They did not listen. So he decided, you know, he was upset. Mughadiban. Mughadiban, he was upset with them. So he walked away thinking that, you know what, uh, it's okay, Allah's not going to punish me because I tried my best and now I'm going away. Not realizing that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala would cause something to happen for him to return to his people because uh, the message still needed to be completed and delivered in, in the way that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala uh, had wanted it to be. So Allah makes mention of something very interesting uh, that this man called out to Allah. He called out to Allah at his time of need. When exactly was the time of need? You see, he jumped onto the ship and the ship was sinking. So they had to uh, ask some of the people to jump over. <laughs> Subhanallah, <laughs> Subhanallah, it's very tough. May Allah not test us with this. So they knew this man was a good man. Uh, they started, they wanted to draw the lot. So every time the number came onto this uh, Yusuf, Yunus alayhi salam, he was asked to go out. Uh, the first time the people said, no, let's try again. They tried again. It was his name again. They tried a second, third time. It was his name all the time. So they asked him to leave. He jumped in. He was swallowed by a big fish and it was darkness, darkness. And the fish went right down to the bottom of that ocean. Uh, and it was very, very dark. Darkness of the whale, the belly of that, in fact, fish. I called it a whale, but the more accurate term is a fish. And darkness of the, 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 the lowest part of uh, that particular sea or ocean and in that darkness he called out to Allah. Now there is an amazing narration that I want to make mention of that Ibn Kathir rahmatullahi alayhi speaks of regarding this dua. Allah says in the Quran in Surah As-Safat verse number 143 had he not been from among those who always used to praise Allah, he probably would have stayed in the belly of that fish until the day of resurrection. Which means because he used to praise Allah every day on the ordinary days, the day he needed it, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala responded immediately. It goes back to a narration of the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam wherein he says, تَعَرَّفْ إِلَى اللَّهِ فِي الرَّخَاءِ يَعْرِفْكَ فِي الشِّدَّةِ 
get close to Allah, get acquainted with Allah during your days of ease and Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will be acquainted with you during your days of difficulty. This reminds me of Yunus alayhi salam. Allah says, فَلَوْلَا أَنَّهُ كَانَ مِنَ الْمُسَبِّحِينَ Had he not been from among those who used to always praise us, declare our tasbih, he probably would have stayed in that condition right up to Qiyamah. So this goes to show my brothers and sisters, praise Allah during your days of ease when nothing is really wrong. Praise Allah. Search for the gifts of Allah upon you and thank Allah for what he has bestowed upon you when you don't have hardship. Uh, when you don't have hardship, so that the day you have a hardship and you call out to Allah, Allah will definitely rush to your assistance like uh, the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam has taught us. So Yunus Alayhi Salatu Wasallam, he calls out to Allah Subhanahu Wa Ta'ala as Allah says, Remember the Prophet Yunus alayhi salam. When he left his people, he was upset with them and he went away, thinking that Allah will not uh, punish him because he went away from people who uh, he, had, he had delivered the message to and they didn't listen to him. And then uh, he found himself in a certain condition, we spoke about that condition, and he called out to Allah in that darkness. What did he say? Just like we heard about the Prophet Ayyub alayhi salam. This Prophet, known as Yunus, the Prophet Jonah, may peace be upon him, he too did not ask Allah to remove him from the hardship. He only praised Allah and declared that I was wrong, I, I did something wrong. Subhanallah. That's all he says. And Allah loved that so much. You know, when you admit your sin, when you admit your error to Allah, Allah loves it. A person who wants to earn the forgiveness of Allah, one of the conditions is to admit that you were wrong. So we as Muslims do not confess our sins to anyone. We confess them to Allah. Allah alone, no matter what you've done, it's your secret between you and Allah. No sheikh, no imam, no scholar, no priest, no husband, no wife, no child, no one. No one needs to know the extent of the sin you've committed between you and Allah. You need to know it, Allah needs to know it. And you ask Allah's forgiveness, you confess to Allah, oh, to Allah saying, Oh Allah, I committed this sin, I did wrong, I regret it, I'm seeking your forgiveness, I'm not going to do it again. The minute those four conditions are met, the sin is wiped out. So this is uh, the noon. Uh, Yunus alayhi salam, he is saying, uh, you know, he called out to Allah saying, La ilaha illa anta. There is none worthy of worship besides you. Subhanallah. Inni kuntu min al I indeed was from among those who wronged myself. I, I was a wrongdoer. I did wrong. So Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala heard this beautiful dua. This dua has in it three different aspects. That's what makes it so, so powerful. La ilaha illa anta subhanaka inni kuntu min al-zalimeen. There is none worthy of worship besides you. Indeed, I have committed something wrong. I have wronged myself. I've done something wrong. Subhanallah. What's the power of the dua? Let's look at the three different angles of it. The first is declaring that Allah is the Lord. He is the owner. He is the only one worthy of worship. No one else is going to help me. This is my Lord. I worship him alone. He is the only one worthy of worship. You know, if we take a look at the translation of La ilaha illallah, in the English language, all of us would say, there is no one worthy of worship besides Allah. If you think about what you've said, you realize that that means you will only render acts of worship to Allah because no one besides Allah is worthy of being worshipped. So that is the first aspect of it where he is uh, 
humbling himself to Allah, declaring that Allah is my maker. He is the one who has definitely, uh, you know, owned every aspect of worship. He is the only one owed worship and fit to be worshipped. Then he says, Subhanak. So he started off by saying, La ilaha illa anta. You know, none worthy of worship besides you. Subhanaka. Subhanaka is the glorification of Allah. Glory be to you. So he's actually now declaring the greatness of Allah. He's saying none worthy of worship besides you. And the word Subhanaka is actually worshipping him. He's worshipping Allah. I won't worship anyone besides you. Here I am declaring a statement that is filled with worship. I'm saying glory be to you. We wouldn't say glory be to anyone else. You know, it's just Subhanallah. No one would say glory be to another creature of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. That subhana is owned only by Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Uh, so he, he is declaring that worship. And the third thing he is saying, Inni kuntu min al I am now admitting my sin. I was wrong. Oh Allah, I'm wrong. So these are the three things. One is he's declaring Allah alone to be worshipped. Two is he's then worshipping Allah alone. And three is he's saying, I was wrong. I did something that I'm not supposed to be doing. I'm not supposed to have done. And this is why the Prophet wasallam tells us in a hadith uh, narrated by uh, Imam Ahmad and also appears in Sunan Tirmidhi. Also a hadith of Sa'id ibn Abi Waqqas radiallahu anhu. Uh, uh, let's listen very carefully. It's a very powerful narration. The Prophet wasallam says, The supplication of Yunus when he called Allah from the belly of the fish. La ilaha illa anta subhanaka inni kuntu min al-zalimeen. No one will ever, no Muslim will ever call Allah with the same words except that Allah will respond that call to that call. Amazing. You want a guarantee of a response from Allah? Here's the dua. La ilaha illa anta subhanaka inni kuntu min al None worthy of worship besides you, O Allah. Glory be to you. Indeed, I am from among the wrongdoers. I did wrong. And in your heart, you know what it was. In your heart, you know what you want because he was in the belly of that fish. He knew I needed to get out of here. I needed the help of Allah. I needed to be saved somehow. So he's, he wants to be saved. He wants to return back to where he was. And he's thanking Allah. So my brothers and sisters, this is a powerful dua. And this is why Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, فَاسْتَجَبْنَا لَهُ وَنَجَّيْنَاهُ مِنَ الْغَمِّ وَكَذَلِكَ نُنْجِ الْمُؤْمِنِينَ We responded his call and we saved him from that sadness and the sad condition he was in. And that is how we save all the believers. An amazing dua of Yunus alayhi salam. And something we've learned again is he didn't say, Oh Allah, take me out of this condition. Oh Allah. He just declared the praise of Allah. He declared that, Oh Allah, Allah alone is worthy of worship. And he says, Oh Allah, I, what I did was wrong. So Allah says, we responded by, by removing him from his sadness. Anyone who's faced with sadness, you may use this dua. It is a beautiful wording that is mentioned by Allah in the Quran. And it was definitely spoken also by the Prophet Yunus alayhi salatu was salam. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala grant us a beautiful understanding. I want to move on to the Prophet Musa alayhi salatu was salam. What a great Prophet of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, the Prophet Moses, may peace be upon him. He is the one who's mentioned the most in the Quran. His story takes up a large part of the Quran. Many surahs, many chapters have the story of Moses, Musa alayhi salam or part of it. And a lot of his prayers are made mention of. You know, he was young and as he was young, he grew up. When he was growing up, uh, in the first or second episode, we spoke about how he punched someone and as a result, the person died. Immediately, he admitted his fault. What did he say? هَذَا مِنْ عَمَلِ الشَّيْطَانِ He says, Oh Allah, ظَلَمْتُ نَفْسِي Oh Allah, I've wronged myself. Look at the words. Oh Allah, this is from the, the handiwork of the devil. Oh Allah, if you don't forgive me, I'm going to be a loser. Subhanallah. So to admit your sin is one thing. Then you call out to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. You know, you can blame shaitan for everything because shaitan definitely is at work all the time. But 
it's a good gift for a believer to blame the devil so that he comes out of it. You know, I always tell people who, are, who don't get along with each other that what a great gift it is when you can just say, no, my brother, you know, shaitan came to me and shaitan made me do this and shaitan made me do that. And the brother will say, yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, I, I know, I understand. Shaitan came to me too. And, it was, and then you embrace each other and you hug each other and you sort your problem out. And who was blamed? Shaitan. Shaitan. Although sometimes we do become little devils ourselves, but may Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala uh, not let that happen. Uh, however, it is not wrong to blame shaitan because even in the Quran, we are taught that the, the prophets of Allah also said that was shaitan. You know, look at Musa alayhi salam. He says, Hada min amali shaitan. This is from the handiwork of the devil. I, I'm not this way. This is not me. You know, I shouldn't have done this and I shouldn't be doing this. So that was something uh, that we had already spoken about. But as a result, they began to look for him and he left the city upon the advice of a man who came to him saying, if you want to be saved, you need to now leave the city. As he's leaving the city, he called out to Allah. Now, sometimes we are faced with a situation where, uh, you know, we are no longer at a workplace. Sometimes we're no longer, uh, we, we, uh, if you're an expatriate somewhere, you're no longer working somewhere or you just lost your job or you need to leave for some reason, depending on what it is. Uh, you, you might uh, take a lesson from what happened to Musa alayhi salam. So Musa alayhi salam here says, uh, and I'm just going to read the verse, verse number 21 of Surah Al-Qasas. Allah says, فَخَرَجَ مِنْهَا خَائِفًا يَتَرَقَّبْ He came out from that city, he was fearing and he was watching. قَالَ رَبِّ نَجِّنِي مِنَ الْقَوْمِ الظَّالِمِينَ He said, oh my Rabb, save me from the nation who are oppressors, from these wrongdoers, from this group of people who are wrongdoers. Oh Allah, save me from them. So, he, uh, the dua is Rabbina Jini min al Zalimin. A beautiful dua. I can use it. You can use it. If ever uh, we would like to ask Allah to save us from a specific people, oh Allah, protect us from this group of people who are wrongdoers, the sinners. Uh, you know, the Pharaoh and the likes, they had committed and perpetrated heinous crimes. They were killing people uh, and they had done so much. And he is saying, oh Allah, save me from these people. And then uh, Allah says, وَلَمَّا تَوَجَّهَتِ الْقَاءَ مَدِيًا قَالَ عَسَى رَبِّي أَنْ يَهْدِيَنِي سَوَاءَ السَّبِيلِ When he faced, when he faced the city of Median, because now he was heading in that direction, he made a dua. He says, Oh my Rabb, I, I, I hope, I have hope in you that you will guide me to the best of paths, to the straightest of paths. Now, when we are making a, a uh, decision, when we're trying to go to another city, when we're opening a new business, when we're going for a new job, etc., etc., we ask Allah, oh Allah, guide us. Oh Allah, I have hope that you will guide me to the best decisions. Sometimes the decisions are tricky. We don't know exactly what decision to make. Look at Musa alayhi salam. He's forced to leave behind everything. He's going on his own, perhaps a little bit of provision that he has. And he is leaving. And he's saying, oh Allah, I, I, I have hope in you that you're going to guide me to the straightest of paths, to the best of decisions. So he says, Asa Rabbi an yahdiyani sawa as -sabil. Let's fast forward a little bit. So he gets to Median, he sees these ladies, he helps them with uh, the quenching of the thirst of their flock. And thereafter, he makes a dua to Allah. He, as he's reclining under the tree, he asks Allah uh, something else. He says, رَبِّ إِنِّي لِمَا أَنزَلْتَ إِلَيَّ مِنْ خَيْرٍ فَقِيرٍ That is uh, a beautiful verse that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala makes mention of where Musa alayhi salam is saying, Oh my Rabb, I am in dire need of any goodness that you are going to send in my direction right now. Subhanallah. Rabbi, oh my Rabb, oh my Lord. Inni lima anzalta ilayya min khayrin faqir. I am for anything good that you are going to send in my direction in great need. I'm in great need of anything, any form of goodness. So whether it was food or drink, whether it was material, no matter what it was. And he did not know exactly what's going to come in his direction. But as a result, guess what happened? Imagine this dua. Rabbi inni lima anzalta ilayya min khayrin faqir. Remember that dua. 
as a result, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala bestowed him with someone who comforted him by listening to his story, number one. And this shows us that when you have a trustworthy person that you can relate your story to or you can, you can trust with what's happened, it's good sometimes to speak. But remember, to, you need a trustworthy person. Musa alayhi salam did not just speak to anyone and everyone. Musa alayhi salam did not just come and say words uh, to anyone he met that, you know, this is what happened, that's what happened. But rather what he did, he called out to Allah to help him and then he found someone he could trust. And after that, he told this man the story. And there were a few signs that he saw that would prove that, uh, that would prove that this person is actually genuine, you know. And after that, he found a confidant. Then he found a job. Subhanallah. He got a job as a result of this dua. The job lasted 10 years. And after that, he found a wife. Subhanallah. So marriage came. First, he found a very good friend who became his father-in-law. So marriage and his boss, which means he found a job, subhanallah. If people are looking for jobs, looking for spouses, looking for so many things. Rabbi inni lima anzalta ilayya min khayrin faqeer. Oh Allah, whatever goodness you're going to bestow upon me, I'm in desperate need of it right now, subhanallah. And we repeat the dua, and there are so many other supplications, it's not just this one. Now, someone might ask, how many times should we repeat that dua? A lot of people ask me a question, you know, uh, there's this dua in the Quran, how many times should I repeat it? You know, someone told me to say it a hundred times. I've heard of someone who told another person to repeat a dua one million times. I want to tell you, to put a figure at how many times you should make the dua, is usually not in the hadith of the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. When it comes to the dhikr and the remembrance of Allah, you have the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam making mention of a hundred times, uh, you know, a certain dua, uh, a certain dhikr, a certain remembrance, or the Subhanallah, Alhamdulillah, Allahu Akbar, 33, 33, 33, or 34, etc., or three times, four times, uh, a certain adhkar, adhkar meaning the remembrance of Allah. But when it comes to dua, a supplication, you say it with conviction. Even if it's once, twice, ten times, a hundred times, there is no fixed number. You need to call out to Allah based on your conviction until you are happy that I've called out to Allah. And you might want to repeat it and repeat it again. At every moment that you think about it, you may repeat it. It's permissible. There's no cap and there's no recommended number by the Prophet ﷺ. Some people might recommend numbers, but that's not from the Prophet ﷺ. I would advise you to follow your heart and to quench the thirst that you have within you to call out to Allah and keep it going with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Don't lose hope. Look at this man. He's asking Allah. He's just been driven out of his city. He enters a new city. He's been very helpful. That shows us when you help people and when you help even those who, are, who might be strangers with goodness, you know, when you help people with goodness, obviously we're living in countries where it's not so easy sometimes to just help any stranger. But there are signs you will get that this is a legitimate cause. When you help people, the chances of your dua being accepted are far greater than if you were just to be selfish and make dua, oh Allah, help me, help me, but you're not ready to help others. Allah continues to help his servant until that person is occupied in helping another. Remember this, my brothers and sisters. So we call out to Allah. Here is the man. He just helped someone. He was desperate. He says, Rabbi inni lima anzalta ilayya min khayrin faqeer. Allah sent him a wife. Allah sent him a job. Allah sent him a confidant and a friend. And thereafter, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala gave him prophethood. My brothers and sisters, what beautiful lessons we've just learned from this dua of Musa alayhi salam. I'm looking forward to seeing you again with the next episode where we will be looking at more of these supplications from Revelation. Until then, aqulu qawli hadha wa sallallahu wa sallam wa baraka ala nabina Muhammad wa salamu alaykum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh.